to last meeting. Um, I cannot do that yet because I'm still downloading the new version of Zoom. So I can't share unless unless people don't need it up on the screen. Do people need the minutes on the screen? See, no. Okay, so, perfect. Okay. So have ever, has everyone the opportunity to look at the minutes in the last meeting? Anyone have any corrections, revisions that they see? Do I have a motion to approve? I'll move. Second. 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 All right. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Yeah. And have been approved. Since we met, we've had a flurry of um, emails and other information that has been disseminated. I just want to make sure everyone has seen everything. Um, starting with, first of all, the contact list. Has everyone gotten the contact list? No. <laughs> and if anyone... No, any working. If anyone has any corrections to the contact list, please let Tara know as soon as possible. Um, all right, so we have um, Rebecca, thank you for getting um, Joe Conley's responses. Um, Jim Feeney updated us on the um, body camera program. That we have that. Um, cybersecurity, and see, we got a grant for that. Um, and then the field use policy. Does everyone have that? Um, and I think what we have, and there was a confirmation that we pay, um, uh, make a payment in lieu of taxes for Great Meadows. And I think that is it. I think that um, is the totality of what we've received in the last meeting. If anyone, does anyone have any questions about anything on those topics, having read what has been sent to us? Michael? As a principal, it is uh, maintaining comedy with uh, the town of Lexington to, to pay them for the municipal services that we, we receive on, uh, on Great Meadows. What's that? We, we, we pay Lexington just to keep things nice and yeah. happy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. All right. All right, on to Grant. And actually, if you want to know the history on that, I believe it was a long, long ago when they tried to make it a drinking water reserve. And so they wanted to preserve and own the rights to the watershed. And that was that. That's why you do that. I don't think they were using Munis Town, but they might have been. But that's the history. I mean, it's tax is in the property. We don't send a whole lot of kids from there to the schools. Um, that's the history behind it. That's not how the tax system works. All right. So, so okay, can I just, this is a, a question back on the enterprise fund and the answer we received regarding insurance for those. Um, I'm just wondering, the way the enterprise fund is, should there be uh, sort of a, a pro rata or some sort of payment back, sort of like an offset almost or not for pro rata of its insurance? I'm not sure who all was on this email, but okay. Carolyn is not here to address it. But um, I saw an email from Carolyn that said that when they talk about insurance, they're going to try to sort out okay. at least how much would be attributable to kid care and especially if kid care expands in size how much of an expansion they would expect okay. i'm not sure now in retrospect whether everyone got that email okay i don't remember seeing that so, carolyn so i guess then for any accountants or anything does it would it make sense to show that cost on the enterprise fund if we view the enterprise fund as sort of a standalone thing just a question i don't really i think answer. it would make sense i think it's a question of asking the finance department to make that happen. Okay. So probably ought to add that to the list of things we need to talk to the finance department about, like who we should be 
even get to bugging them about COAs or rolling it back to the budget and taking out enterprise fund last time. So maybe we should. Well, and you compile a final list of. We're going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I will try to do that. Tara will help me. Yes, thank you. <laughs> All right. Any other questions or comments before we start getting into the budgets? All right. So we have police, fire, and sexual services. All right, Daryl, John, take it from here. And I will start with police, um, which is on, <clears throat> excuse me, page 116 of the budget book. Um, if you um, go with most of us with computers, if you want to look at it, it is on SharePoint under fiscal 25 budget folder and then under public page for the police. Okay, um, so on the salary side, I mean, to be honest, on the entire budget side, there's really not a whole lot going on. Uh, the interesting issues with police sort of do with vacancies, of course, uh, body on cameras. Uh, on the salary side, um, the only changes are on the 5100 account. Um, this is um, a very step increase and so on, and then a little uh, reduction in longevity. Um, Alan, if you have tried to tie the salary detail to the summary page, it's off by $125. Uh, apparently the salaries page misses uh, part of the longevity for the chief. So the summary page is correct. Uh, okay, so, so in the Okay, Alan, Alex no. Um, then Topher, you had some questions. So on the overtime, the 5103 line item, um, the overtime is driven by uh, primarily the various staffing requirements. So on the shift level, uh, the two shifts between midnight and 4 p.m. is required that there be four patrol officers uh, on, on the shift. So the 4 p.m. to midnight um, uh, needs seven because Arlington is such a rock rollicking town at night. Um, and then they have to be two ranking officers per shift. So for whatever reason, vacancies, vacation, sick, um, they can't get up to those compliments and they have to pay overtime to cover that. Uh, then the differential line item 5115, um, you know that that's much smaller than the differential in the dollar detail page. Uh, that 5115 line item is only for Differential for dispatchers. Um, all the other differentials for ranking patrol are included in 5100. And for nights, they get an additional 9%. And weekends, they get an additional 3%. And then finally, the stipends 5160 and 5162. Um, I've listed the, the five different kinds of stipends and the additional amounts they get. Filling any of these roles. Um, then on the expenses side, absolutely no change. Um, but just a quick overview of, um, of the uh, staffing levels. Um, police patrol, they have 49 FTE, ranking 19, civilian is 9.44, and support at 10. Uh, then for the vacancies, they have six uh, in the police patrol, none in ranking. The manager's um, budget book shows two vacancies in civilians, but apparently those people actually exist in those positions are filled. Uh, and then there's one support vacancy. Um, okay, on to some of the issues. The police union contracts, they are currently um, in negotiations with the ranking officer union. Um, it's in arbitration. This has to cover the fiscal 21 to 24 contracts. Um, and the two major issues are COLA increases and uh, body worn cameras. Uh, now, this contract, once it's negotiated, um, will expire at the end of June. 
um, as well the ranking officer. So both of them will be out of contract uh, as of July. Um, so I assume the negotiations will start up again <laughs> after July. On the vacancy side, as I said, there are six in the police patrol. Um, they've got <laughs> four applying um, for the police academy. If they all get in and then graduate, uh, that would leave two vacancies. Um, at least at the time they uh, they graduate, who knows what'll what'll be then. Uh, one of the people taking uh, taking the test in March is a dispatcher, so that will create a vacancy in that unit. And the chief said they had to go to the non-resident civil service list for the first time, uh, which kind of shows how um, what they're up against. Uh, for retirements, they had one in fiscal 24 and the ranking officers, uh, and they um, anticipate there could be one in uh, fiscal 25. In the civilians um, area, as I said, the two positions, which is the animal control officer and the, the uh, social work position, um, are actually filled. So obviously that's something in the state in the end. And the manager book. And then the dispatcher, the one vacancy they have, they're working to fill. So any questions on vacancy? Grant. I worked really, really hard. I've been able to answer. I yeah. worked really hard thinking of one. Okay, this, you should get this one. Um, so there's zero vacancies in the rank officers. Yeah. Does that mean that all the you mentioned the overtime shift have that weird thing. They have to have one, two on duty all the time. Does that mean there's no overtime for rank officers? Or? Well, remember, if they're on vacation or on set, then, or, you know, court duty or whatever, right. for whatever reason they're not available, cover shift, then, then it would be. Yeah. But otherwise, they, it, it is built. Okay, yeah. great. Thanks. Um, I'll save the other one for later. Thanks. Okay. Is that right? Yeah. Um, was there any discussion about how this affects operations? Um, to this point, they seem to be managing by using overtime. I, and I'll talk about it in, in a couple of slides, but they are struggling with filling the vacancies they have and staying up to staff. But um, it, they didn't bring up any operational issues. Sophie. Okay. Um, in the in the vacancies listed, just looking at the previous folders, I see one looks like he was promoted to sergeant. Do we know why? Do they have an idea of why the other ones have left? Or do we know if it's like cost of living, moving other towns? In some cases, if they've um, <laughs> taken somebody off the non-resident list, I think if the there's, a big, um, there's an opening in that town, they have to go back. Um, and then as I'll talk about um, in a couple of minutes, it's um, not a great time to be a police officer. So it's, um, you know, all over the country, it's, it's challenging. Any more questions? Yeah. No, thank you. I might as well ask this one now. Um, more high level, animal control. <laughs> Um, in theory, different than practice. So why is that under police and not under like a social? Like, do they have any clubs, um, authority or any? I don't know. Do they? Is it not? To my knowledge, it's always been under the police. Yeah. Right. I, I, you know, going back, it used to be the dog office, but now it's more than just the dog office. It's always come on the police. But the, but the dog officer in the old days used to have some authority. I think he used to carry a gun or something like that. No, they, 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 they don't carry guns. Uh, now, those days, they didn't have radios. They, they always contacted the dispatchers. So they got into a situation. They were on the radio right away. It seems more of a like a social type of thing. Or it's possible it could be that. Um, but I don't, any, has that ever been mentioned or brought up or any any type of uh, sort of mentioned about that ever before? I thought I've heard something, right, thank you. 
Right. Commenting on that, I'm just, I have a little bit of knowledge because I'm the dog liaison for the crusher block. I've had a little bit of training on it. I think, I think the issue is that an awful lot of the animal control officers' calls are about off leash dogs and things like that. And it's just really good if, if he or she's wearing a badge. Oh, so yeah. for when you're, you know, trying to enforce the dog leash rules. Uh, it's I, better. It's very better. Hard. Better if you wear a badge. Yeah. It's still not easy. In a uniform. Thank you. And, and, and just one more note is they have the authority to issue citations. Yeah. Right. In violation right. of the right. authority. Absolutely. Charlie, did you have your hand up? I did, it was covered. Thank you. Any other questions? No. Does the department have an explicit policy in favor against anything uh, about uh, hiring uh, family members? Never, never come up, never about to ask him. I mean, against or for? Any. Can I help with that question? Sure, please. Historically, it's always been a lot. Presently, there are three brothers on the, on the police department. When I worked, I had a brother on the police department, a ranking officer. Um, Chief John Carroll had two other brothers. So historically, it's, it's been a lot. There yeah, was at one time there was also a father and daughter that they were both on the job at the same time. John, I'm not, I'm not sure if Daryl's going to get into but the uh, civil service. What happened? You don't. <laughs> I, I'm not, I'm not, <laughs> just um, uh, the importance of civil service and how they're looking into that. Do you have a slide yeah, on that? Yeah. Okay, so yeah. I won't steal that. I'm sorry, I should have sent it. Yeah. yeah. So the um, hiring civil service obviously is a big part of hiring. Department, and uh, there's some discussions related to that. Yes. All right. So, staffing challenges. Um, and as I said, they're increasingly challenged to um, stay up to full staffing levels. The chief showed a very um, compelling anecdote that 30 years ago, um, there were 400 applicants taking the test. Now there's only 16. Uh, so, we can really see how the pool has shrunk. Um, being coming a police officer isn't as attractive as it used to be. Uh, there's constraints on pay, extensive training, and then I think the one that's really um, difficult is uh, increased public scrutiny. And you, know, you can come down sort of either side of that. Um, you know, I personally think generally public scrutiny is a good thing, but you can understand that from the point of view of a police officer. You know, just think about if you had to carry around a camera in the course of your job or your day. Um, so um, you can understand that it's, it's difficult. Uh, one of the measures that they're trying to take is to um, uh, is to get out of some of the civil servant um, uh, requirements. Uh, so last year, town meeting uh, passed a measure to withdraw from civil service for hiring purposes only. Uh, approved by town meeting and now it's stuck in the legislature. Uh, this would allow the town to recruit the particular point of interest is to allow the town to recruit uh, non-residents so they wouldn't have to um, uh, just deal with the list. Um, new hires, once they were hired, would then be covered under civil service. And in general, the unions don't uh, want to fully leave civil service uh, without being compensated. For example, in Lexington, they did do that. And the unions negotiated a 5% increase. Um, and I lost a bullet point somewhere here that there are some, apparently, the uh, firefighters union and some of the veterans groups are um, not supportive of um, Arlington withdrawing, uh, towns in general withdrawing from civil service. Um, then for the dispatchers, um, I learned this year um, that both the dispatchers and the mass mechanic have shared with the Fire department, for whatever reason, I didn't, didn't know that. Um, the dispatchers used to be a career, if you might remember, you know, they were dispatchers that would be there for many years. Uh, apparently, now it's really become a stepping stone. Um, it's viewed as a great uh, entry point for uh, somebody coming into the department and then uh, moving up to patrol. But it means that um, where the dispatchers used to be able to sort of manage themselves. Now, when there's so many new people coming in and out and a lot of churn, um, that's much more uh, problematic. So the chief uh, would like to hire a 
uh, get a position and hire uh, a full-time uh, dispatch supervisor. Um, we asked Chief Kelly as well, and he's supportive. Um, the position is currently filled by someone, uh, a full-time person who's half-time on uh, managing the uh, dispatchers, even though she's never been a dispatcher. And the other part of her job is as a crime analyst. Um, and then that's increasingly uh, difficult because uh, with the establishment of the Arlington Civilian Police Advisory Commission, uh, there's an increased demand for transparency and data. So that person really needs to get back to the crime yeah. analysis part of her job. Um, to this point, for whatever reason, they haven't gotten um, uh, the manager to agree to um, request that position. Questions on this slide? So far. Yeah, the, um, the Civilian Police Advisory Committee is not set up and running? I think it's starting. It was approved last year, especially. Uh, I think it was longer ago than that. No, we approved it at the time meeting last year. I believe. In 2023, not 2022. It took a long time to appoint. Yeah. Okay. Charlie? <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm, thank you, Madam Chairman. I'm not sure that this applies to this slide, but a couple of years ago, um, some members of the Finance Committee did a report on the police department. You might remember that. Who did that? And it was, it was quite an excellent report and very comprehensive. And I'm wondering if you came across any patterns of change, good or bad, in the police department since that report was done. Um, the only one, um, and you know, to be honest, at the you know, these budget meetings, we tend to focus most on the, mostly on the budget, whereas as you know, that report was much more expansive than that. Um, I think the only thing I've noticed is that uh, the hiring challenges are sort of getting more uh, pronounced and uh, I don't know if dire is the right word, but uh, they're, they're up against it with that. Um, whereas I think even a couple of years ago, and John, I don't know if you sort of detected the same, it's sort of half kind of resignation and half frustration. Uh, yeah, I mean, they, they do have, you know, they do are able to find new recruits, but it's getting harder and harder. So, yep, that's, that's the impression I got. Yeah. Josh. Thank you. Um, thank you. Uh, on that subject, with the, with the change in civil service, give them a much bigger pool, would that help them more? They'd be able to um, recruit non-residents. Right. I mean, I would think the chief would have to like have non-residents as people who are on that specific civil service list. Right. And, and, and there's nothing that can be done to expedite that through the legislature? What, what, what's the hold up there? You can't get the legislature to do much they don't want to do, so no. You so, need, I think the explanation which uh, Darrell referenced was um, you, need, you need to sign off by the state legislature and, and apparently I think the firefighters and the, and the veterans don't want to touch it. They don't, even, even though it sounds like a small change, they don't even want to make a small change because they're afraid to where that would go. They like the civil service. So right. So is that more of the problem, or is it? Would you blame the legislature for going so slowly? Would you blame internal bickering? For because I think there's well, from I think a town meeting perspective, all these things happen so slowly. I, you know, but I think it's a, it's a combination. I think with the legislature, there tends to be inertia anyway. Um, and then not having full throated support doesn't help. But, um, you know, I've worked for the state most of my career, and you know, it's a fact of life in dealing with anything in the legislature that even something that everybody thoroughly supports still can take a long time to get through. It really depends on what else is on their queue, where they are in the legislative calendar. Uh, so, like they would bring up Arlington's request and vote on it as a separate issue. I don't think it, I don't think Arlington is the problem. I think it's the no, but I'm it, saying it, like would they bring five up? other there's five other towns in that that bill. I see. Um, I don't remember what they were. I don't know what they were. Yeah. Um, it's a home rule petition. Yeah, a home rule petition. Thank you. 
Uh, Alex Jones. Thank you. I go back to the dispatcher, dispatcher supervisor question. I guess I always thought the comm supervisor supervised the dispatchers, but I guess I'm wrong. You know, the difference is between the. I think I think that's the position. I, I did okay. look as I was putting this together. And I, that's the only position. Apparent. Um, but that's full time and it exists. That's the, it is a full time position. It's just split between two roles. So what did you reference? The yeah, comms? It's comms yeah, supervisor. It's a full time position. What? Um, it's in the same box as all the dispatchers. I assume that was a, that was a person who supervised the dispatching yeah. operation. But I may be wrong. And I, I mean, he said the, the chief wants a, a dispatch supervisor full time. Full time. Yeah. This is a full time job. So you must be talking about a different job description. I was just. Yeah, I'm confused about that. It's possible. They, you, you, they, they started that. Uh, it wasn't called Comets Way. They started yeah. that um, under the previous chiefs. But when they when the, the uh, designated supervisor retired, it went away. So there was no, then it went back to the shift commander's responsibility for the dispatcher. Then there was the change. Again, when the, uh, uh, although there's dispatching going on downstairs for both police and fire, when the fire went back to, to, the, uh, to the headquarters, there was a change there too. So it's. Um, well, what, what's the job description of Smith, the comm supervisor? I have no idea. I believe mm -hmm. we, we can clarify this, but my, yeah. my thought is that because um, both the fire chief and the police chief referenced you know the part-time there is a part-time dispatch supervisor who also you know, spends her other time as a crime analyst but we heard that from both both of them so that's definitely sounds like that's the facts so i'm thinking that this smith is that smith? smith is half calm supervisor and then half prime analyst because i don't see any i don't see anyone yeah, okay because it, it's one fte but yeah saying, but, but i don't see yeah. anyone with a 0.5 FTE. yeah but it's, it's basically half on each. So even though it says calm supervisor yeah. 1.0 okay. FTE, I think it's a half yeah. dispatcher. Okay. Half and the analysis. problem they've got is she doesn't really have direct experience. She being a dispatcher. Well, that's a hybrid and problem. Then, <laughs> and then secondly, the demands on her to be has to do prime analysis are increasing. Right. It's kind of the, 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 high, the full time calm supervisor is doing crime analysis on the side. I suppose. Yeah. Well, okay, yeah. but the position's called a comp supervisor. Yeah, there's no position called <laughs> one FTE. So. I think it was the way the way the chief explained it uh, that prior Chief Ryan uh, needed a crime analyst. Okay. And the only way to get it was to position it as a uh, dispatch supervisor. They need one more person. And the crime analyst was a police officer mm -hmm. at one time. Yeah. And then they switched to civilian. Mm -hmm. Other questions, Sophie. Uh, so I, I had the same question, but to follow up a little bit more, did I understand that this is supposed to be they work part time for fire and part time for police? Though they so, share, yeah. yeah. Share. Okay. So the calls come in. To so I thought in the past when things were shared, it would be a 0.5 under the police budget and a 0.5 under the fire budget. The dispatchers are all under police, the master mechanic is under fire fully. Okay. Maybe you just want a record keeping. You know, yeah. Yeah, the logic. But yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then um, the other salary question I had was um, on the police civilians. There are two positions that are not one of T's. They're part time. One being a social worker. I'm just curious. They mentioned the need for to increase the social worker position. Um. So that position is shared between police and health and human services. But do we see the 0.25 somewhere else? Should be in the home and human services budget. So just like, okay, but we don't split the dispatchers between fire and but we split the. The call of the fire or police come in through. Well, I'm just, I'm just confused because sometimes, and I didn't mean for it to be this one, but so I'm, the answer is the social, I was asking if social worker why it wouldn't be up at, to a one, why it's only a part-time. And the answer is it is full-time, but half 0.25 is somewhere else. 
but then on the dispatchers, which is share, police, fire, it's one on police and zero on fire. Perhaps, perhaps it's China. all public safety. I'm just guessing. Well, I'm part just reading. Part of the reason, part of reason they do fall under, and I remember when we used to do a lot of this like 10 years or so ago, if I kicked and screamed on it, is there was a large push for um, personnel to be in the budget of the person that they report to. Okay. So, like, if if you're like, that's why, like, for example, we did on the first night when we were talking about the audit. So technically, the auditors report to the select board, which is why they're in. The select that. board, budget. even though the select board sees them twice a year, shakes their hand, thanks them so much, grabs a book, and walks out. So that's, and I think that happened with that. So the well, social worker who's police civilian, wouldn't that argue? We always argue put in the when ten years ago we used to argue put in the budget of the person reporting. Social worker probably came after we did all that arguing. And so who does the social worker report to? Annie. Um, I believe the social worker has two different supervisors, okay. but I also think there's a little bit of common going on here. It, it's just we don't follow the same pattern always in how we're budgeting, and they happen to split this position, this budget responsibility, and it didn't split the dispatchers. So, and yeah. is that split 75% 70, 25% still a fair split between the responsibilities of who they respond to? I, I think. I have not heard from HHS that they feel like they need more than the 0.25. I think that if you were going to determine where the need is the greatest, it's actually in the police department. They actually can only use two full time people and they don't have them. Uh, it's, it's a support for officers who are dealing with um, requests to handle. Uh, people who are in distress, who are not criminals, they're just suffering breakdown, or the homeless population who can be a little hostile sometimes, et cetera, et cetera. So you have police coverage to support the social worker. And it's it's been a good system. It's well, that's why I thought maybe it needed to go up to one. Yeah. But I, it actually is. I personally would love it to go up to one, but, you know, everybody's got to request it and we end up with um, yeah, and I don't see 0.25 for social worker in the yeah. services. So I wonder if we're going to full time in the commission or does it really use for part time? I'm pretty confident they share it. I'm pretty confident. Okay, well, I, 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 I just, maybe it's grant funded or something. I just don't see it. Mm. It's already funded. It, it, it is grant funded. There's a Edinburgh. Yeah, Edinburgh. 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 It's funding that 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 um social worker, Edinburgh Center. Yeah. That one's a Is it in fact vacant? I don't know why. I think they said they it was still actually asked that question. So they want to do services. Yeah, let's take this up when we do community services yeah. and let's stick with the, the police budget. Any Additional questions, or can Daryl continue on? Dean? I guess I have one question. It's not really about the numbers. I'm trying to reconcile like different things we hear in the committee over the course of several years. So, in your presentation, you spoke about how they were having difficulty recruiting individuals to become police officers. I'm, I, I, I understand. I, I take that as like the salt, right? In the fall, though, when the deputy town manager was giving us the patrolman's contract, he talked about how they were a powerful and sympathetic group. So you're having difficulty re recruiting a power. So those contradict, right? Like that statement he makes is not jive with this, okay? And then we see a lot of we see a lot of public sentiment in the state that sort of I would call it like it's not very favorable towards police and policing. But then they're powerful in the legislature on home rule petitions. Like that, those don't jive. Like something's delinking here. Unions like, are as long very as they're powerful. not powerful enough. Unions are very powerful in the state. And the state legislature listen to unions. Whatever the, union it happens to be. They're, they're, well, they're powerful if they yeah, they're powerful if you accept the premise of the power, right? If you don't accept the premise of the power, they're not powerful, right? Like 
series of campaigns. Well, yeah. Well, so that's 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 it, right? Yeah, but if I'm, you know, so it's not that they're powerful. I'm a legislator, and I've got the police who maybe are lukewarm about it, and fire who's not liking it at all. Don't so I'm not going to do anything. Right. So the fair way to say it is, the Patrolman Association go to the bottom. They're not sympathetic right now. You're right. They're just. They're powerful, so it's raw power. It's not like sympathy and mom and apple pie. It's okay. That's true. I just don't want to paint us a picture of like you know, caring stuff like that when it's not. Well, I do. Well, I think it depends on you know, each individual police officer or potential police officer what animates them or not. So, yeah, just to this idea of this. Uh, Brad, I think too that the assistant, the deputy manager. Oh, they could you speak up a little bit, please? Yeah, I think the deputy manager last year said that the police were very unified across their industry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. so the, the next area will, of course, not be controversial at all. So we'll just breathe through this. Um, body worn cameras. Um, this has been this issue has been around for quite a while. Um, so the department bought uh, 70 cameras for patrol officers to eventually use once the bargaining issues are resolved. That's six thousand dollars from the asset forfeiture fund. Um, which for those of you who don't know, this uh, this fund has come up uh, previous years. Um, they can use it for police equipment and training, but they can't use it for recurring costs. So they're buying the cameras all up front. They got a 15% discount. When she, when the chief said this, my first thought was, depending on how long it takes to actually deploy the cameras, uh, who's to say that the cameras are going to be current by then? Um, but they're they're, they're covered. They're covered through the contract, the life of the contract that acts on keep them current uh, through that five-year term. Uh, for ongoing funding, um, uh, they will request operating budget increase to cover future recurring costs. Uh, they will go out and try to find and apply for uh, grants. And then the town meeting appropriation, which I, I know happened, I couldn't, I look forward to this happening. I couldn't find what year it happened. I'm not sure what year now. Uh, of $42,000 is still untapped. Then the patrol officers are in arbitration on the uh, cameras. Uh, the outstanding issue is the union wants to incorporate the uh, body camera policy into the contract, which would mean then then any change in the policy would have to be bargained, um, which is obviously a complicating factor. Um, when and if the policy is implemented, the patrol officer will get a 2% increase uh, and then the camera issue is also in arbitration with the ranking officer, uh, but apparently it's separate from the uh, basically separate from the money parts of the contract. And then both the patrol and ranking officers have to agree uh, to the cameras before they can be deployed. So it can't be one or the other of the groups that are involved. Um, then just to close the loop, I took the uh, email that um, Tom Mander sent Charlie, just put it in here in case anybody missed it. This really talked about how uh, they'll manage the footage and the image, imaging, um, imagery, um, to make sure it doesn't fall into the wrong hands or people who don't want to be uh, on the image mark. All right, um, body worn camera is not a big deal. So, any, any questions? So, for um... yeah, so you said that uh, both the patrol officers and the ranking officers are taking this body worn camera policy to arbitration. Is this two different arbitrators? In other words, could they end up with either not the same rulings or you know, not um, really contradictory, it's... but it might be. It's two different arbitrations. I don't know if it could end up with the same arbitrator. 
No, right, but so they could, it sounds like it could end up with. It could, and they have to be the same or the cameras can't be deployed. So they both have to agree to. So the arbitrators have to agree. On right, well, what yeah. They have to do. Okay. I'm, I'm wondering if we should consider moving $10,000 that was added in the IT budget to the police budget, which is dedicated to the body worn cameras. Uh, because in other words, when I read the line, full request operating budget increases to cover future cost, recurring costs, I assume it means the police budget. But I think the yeah, I don't know that, that, that the ISP should... for the, the additional uh, fiber line. Yeah, the, 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 the manager stuck that in the IT yeah. budget, but I'm wondering if it would be. I think most network budget. services are in the IT budget. I yeah, would think that's yeah. the best okay. way. Okay. Yeah, the best there. Somehow it seems more transparent if it's put in with the same as the operating cost of the cameras. So, so for me, I have some information here. Yeah, yeah. So on this, um, so they've run the wire basically. IT, yeah. all they did was run the wire, and then the rest of it goes over to the police. So they've already done that, is my understanding. And so they've kind of spent the ten thousand dollars. So at this point, um, I think any future anything. Going forward, will be in the police budget. This isn't ten thousand a year. I think this was just to run to install the wire, to install the data. That would be ten thousand a year. Um, I think that was the. I didn't get the impression. I can double check. Um, okay. Well, when we get to the IT budget, because yeah, because there was an expense increase request for IT for ten thousand dollars for ISP to support that. But maybe that's just a one-time cost. Right. I'll I'll double check. Okay. Thank you. I mean, it just seems like operating costs for this would might be better off in the police budget. That's all I my comment. The question. Anybody else have any other questions on body cameras? All right. All right. So um, I will make a motion to approve, um, and it's the taxation call, right? Yes. Um, at printed nine million four hundred ninety-five thousand and twenty-one dollars. Second. All right. Any further questions on the police budget? Um, I, I have one question about the police chief's retirement. Is that still in the motion? She's got, and I, I I meant to put this in, but I <laughs> she's got another two years on the contract. Um, they are sending one um, ranking um, officer to um, executive training. I think it's in Washington, right? I think they're just, just next month. Oh, that's right. It's in Washington. Right. The outfit doing the training is based in Washington. Yeah. Um, so I'm assuming that's the, uh, so, I mean, that's sort of like the leading mm -hmm. candidate. So they're thinking of succession, but it's not going to be imminent. No. Actually, I had a follow-up question to, to the chief. If there was a specific timeline, and she said there was no specific timeline for the transition. Yeah, and as I said, we've got the two years left in our contract. So we have a motion that's been seconded. Any other questions? Sophie, just to follow up on that, that reminded me from last year, so when there was a ten thousand dollar increase on training last year, and that was deemed to be for the chief's retirement succession. And I thought at the time we said it was for, to send two people. So, but we're keeping the budget item the same, but should cover two, right? Not just one. um. She's sending one. They're sending one. Okay. So if you were looking at last year's budget. I, right, last year's budget, there was a 10000 increase. This year, it's the same. But last year, we said it covered two people going to training this year for that same, you know, keeping it level to last year's. We're only sending one, so presumably it costs less. I guess we'll see the actuals yeah. next year. They may not have been able to send two. Right. So it's expensive to see. Yeah, I think they would have preferred to send one. Okay. One on one. All right. Um, we'll take a vote. All in favor of um, the police department 
budget at 9495021 say aye. 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 Any opposed? It's unanimous. And then John, you want to do fire and I'll come back and do a Sure. So, uh, moving along to fire, it's on page 124 of the budget book. Similar to the police, um, not a lot of movement from last year. Uh, salaries up for about. 29,000 or so, which is primarily factual. Speed credit up 50,000, also in the uh, contract. Um, some other small movement uh, related to longevity and to stipends. And then when you get to the expenses, uh, no movement at all from the prior year. Um, as far as vacancies, no vacancy on for firefighters. One big key vacancy is the master mechanic. Uh, we did hear that there was a master mechanic who left, who's been with me uh, on the fire department for many, many years. He will be sorely missed. He really did work over and above his position. Um, they have an interview in early February. They're going to hopefully do, uh, fill that position quickly. There's, there's uh, some, uh, yeah, some of yeah, yeah, I don't know. Maybe some move over so I can see more here. So, uh, anyway, yeah, so the master mechanic is the key vacancy, and they're really hoping to fill that very quickly. Uh, the, the, position, uh, the, the person retired, and uh, he, uh, he is, uh, he has left some big shoes to fill. That's, uh, that's what they're focusing on regarding hiring and fire department. Otherwise, they're in really good shape. Um, we also heard again, we don't have to dive into it again, but we did hear about the dispatcher supervisor that is not technically a fire vacancy, but um, they are also hoping to, um, you know, span the position to a full time position on the dispatcher supervisor. Um, the, probably the, the biggest thing which we have heard a little bit about, we heard about it last week when the uh, town manager was here, is the ambulance um, offsets. And, you know, it's the kind of thing you hear about over and over again, and it does start to sink in. Uh, so I'll try to be brief here, but just stick to the basic facts. So pre-COVID, pre-COVID, um, Arlington, so first of all, stepping back a bit, the Arlington firefighters, are trained for basic life services, that's BLS. Uh, they are not trained for advanced life services, ALS. In order to get the ALS, they need Armstrong ambulances to come in and assist. Uh, historically, uh, Arlington would bill and receive the revenue from the BLS services. Um, Armstrong would come in and uh, transport the ALS services. They would get sixty percent of the revenue, yeah, and they, they didn't transport. That's how we got the we got our cut of the ALS. Yeah, I, yeah. The it's, town, the town did the ALS transport. Our strong did the actual provision of medical services. Okay, thank, thanks for the clarification. So you're right. Armstrong provided the services. Um, our town, town of Arlington, would actually do the transporting. Um, Armstrong would do the billing. Armstrong would get 60% of the revenue and the town of Arlington would get 40% of the revenue. And then uh, Armstrong would also get a 4% of the Um Through COVID, there was just a shortage for the ambulance services across the board. It is, it is statewide. You do read about it in the newspaper. It was actually just a terrible incident in Winthrop, Winthrop I think, a few weeks ago, where there was... Um, tragedy related to, to slow ambulance services. So it is kind of a statewide thing, having a hard time to fill these, to meet these needs. Um, so the solution here was, they went to Armstrong and they said, can you dedicate, uh, have dedicated ALS ambulance services in the town of Arlington? They said, sure, but we need, we need to be able to fill and, and 
keep 100% of the, uh, the revenues. So that's where it stands now. So they now, they now provide the transport services. Yeah, they provide, they kind of own it. They, they have a dedicated ambulance. Thanks for the clarification, Daryl. They have a de dedicated uh, ambulance. They transport it, they provide the services, they bill it, and they keep the money 100%. Um, so we, that was that 40% that we received in connection with the ALS made up the offset. So that's, that's going, going, gone. Uh, it's not like it's pretty low this year. Um, on the flip side, we did hear that the BLS billing is actually up because the town of Arlington did try to enhance its BLS services so they can, they can uh, provide 100% of those services, which they effectively are. So uh, Chief Kelly did, was pretty confident, we certainly didn't see the numbers, but he's pretty confident that the BLS billings are up over the last two years. Uh, why do we see that here? That goes right into the general fund. So uh, his thought was Arlington, the town of Arlington is probably at almost net zero with all of this. However, because the um, ALS buildings are now going 100% to Armstrong, the offset is going away. Um, so, you know, like I said, we've kind of heard, uh, we've heard of that two or three times last year. This is probably the second time we've heard of it this year. So it shouldn't be news, but um, hopefully that has a little bit of uh, clarity there. Um, any questions so far? Sure. Um, oh, Charlie, sorry. Annie. Thank you, Madam Chair. I have two questions. Um, one goes back to the overtime. Uh, again, this is a fully staffed department, right? There are no vacancies. Yeah. So, but the overtime, which I have always heard, was planned to cover demand because of vacancy. Yep. This seems to be pretty constant. Yeah, and actually Toby sent that question over, so we did address it to the chief. And his response, which did make some sense to me, if you go back to 2022, which when they did have a hard time filling, you know, overtime made up almost 20% of salaries. Um, now it's down to, uh, you know, a small fraction of that, I'd say maybe 5%. So, you know, why is it even a number at all? Because we're fully staffed, it should be zero. He says no, because, you know, as Daryl mentioned with the police, you're always going to have holidays, uh, firefighters out uh, sick, things like that. So there's always some kind of need, uh, maybe special events. There's always some kind of need for overtime. He said that percentage is probably about as low as you can go. And you can see it's the exact same as last year. So he says it's, he says that's just kind of um, necessary. Second, second question is, um, we need a discussion about the ALS versus the BLS and splitting it between the town and Armstrong. How, how is it determined that a call requires basic light services and not advanced light services? Um, that's a great question. You know, I, I'm sure, you know, if there's any doubt, they, they probably um, call Armstrong. Uh, maybe they do it on site. So I don't know the exact you know, requirement. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of judgment involved. So, um, but, you know, I assume if, if they think maybe it sounds like BLS and they get there and they, they need Armstrong, they call immediately. I assume they try to call, call Armstrong as soon as possible. But that, that's not something. Anna? How, how are we getting the sellers to keep the spot, did they say? Did they have changes in personnel that drop their total salary spot? Um, you know, it's, it's, I think what it comes down to really is, is the, um, the union negotiations, which yeah. none of this reflects any union negotiation, no, any new mm -hmm. contract, the new contract, you know, we'll probably see it next, next year. But I thought we settled the contract through 2024. So you, you expect to see like some cost of living yeah, yeah. So, yeah it, you know that's that's twenty nine thousand. Uh, maybe some turnover. Yeah. So in other words, like you know, you get a low. Yeah, I mean, usually a high what happens? Person in. What happens if you don't? Well, I forget how we do it. We either they either get no increase if there's no 
for a contract, they just get what they have in the old contract, or they get the same sort of rate of increase as the old contract. Yeah. Fill those down the line. Do you remember, Dave, what we do? Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure. So. Yeah, so it's possible because they're in the contract negotiation. Or not. There's probably some salaries that are coming. Yeah, that's a good question. Like, you know, like this isn't even two and a half percent. This is, you know, yeah, so if you no, get no. the baseline, and this is like, uh, yeah, this is like really almost like a straight flat line. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, it looks like there have been some changes in personnel and newer people brought in. At yes. Salary. If I was thinking like well, senior you could people also out, see people people in. in the reserve for negotiation. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's wondered. Sure. Um, yeah, now I'm going to get actually Toba sent some questions over. I'll run through his questions. Oh. Um, so we already talked about the overtime, uh, the vacation uh, account. Or line item 5106. That's actually vacation they can purchase. On use vacation, they can purchase a certain amount at the end of the year. And that's uh that's what that relates to. It's you know, no one knows exactly how much vacation will be purchased at the end of the year. Um, but they put pretty good size the same amount as last year. When you say the town, yeah, 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 um, that's that. And uh, what kind of schooling leads to the school credits? Uh, any kind of degree in fire sciences? Which ones are fire sciences? Uh, what, and now the next question what is hospital medical care account 525 line item 5257? That's a really interesting one. I feel like it's one that we should keep an eye on. Um, if you notice in 2022, it was all the way up to 95,000. 2023, it came down to 9,000. It budgeted 25,000 last two years. Um, that is when the fire department gets hit with a workers' comp claim. To me, it seems crazy, but it's only because, I, you know, apparently we're self insured when it comes to workers' comp. So if someone does file a workers' comp claim, the town manager sends it over to the specific department. So, you know, it seems to me that that almost like it doesn't really sound like insurance. It sounds like just. You know, let's see what's going to come next year. Who knows? Hopefully, not so, much. Because even if even if firefighter is long left the department, yeah. Self insured usually means that we are we are paying the first X number of hundred thousand dollars in insurance, and then we buy what's called reinsurance for yep. any major major. So we're Got it. out millions of dollars, but then we have to collect premiums from the employees to cover that self insured. Okay. And we don't cover 100% fit. Yeah, yeah. So I guess, you know, 95000 seems like a lot, but I guess apparently yeah. there's, there's something right. that's was a There was a, a $62,000 knee replacement that year. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Was, I remember there was, a, there was one person that apparently was going in for it and happened to mention that he worked for the Arlington Fire Department. And the ear parked up and they're like, yeah. You need to, don't say that again. I'm so <laughs> um, so yeah, the, the offsets we already talked about. The uh, the master mechanic, they're they're trying to fill it as soon as they can. Actually, my notes here said they have an interview February 7th. So master mechanic position. And then the breakdown of the calls. Actually, um, Chief Kelly just sent this over yesterday. I'll put it up on SharePoint. I didn't get a chance to put it up on SharePoint yet. But um, so most recent year with data available, there was a total of 55,793 claims, uh, excuse me, uh, calls, 5,700. Um, 3,800 were emergency medical. So that's clearly the biggest, you know, uh, maybe almost 60% emergency medical call. After that, the largest number is 981 for alarms, fire alarms going off. Interestingly, fire, there was um, 63 calls really to actual fires. Yeah. Um, but there's 10, 10 or 12 different ca categories. I'll put this up on SharePoint and get a chance to do that today. Okay, questions, Grant and then Michael. Uh, thanks. Um, that's only fire right there, right? For the dispatch calls? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. Um, non-budget, but 
And I won't ask Daryl because he would brought that to our attention. So, okay, I was interested in what the breakdown was. And since it's going to the same dispatch, um, that's fine. Thank you. We can ask if you want to wait. I was just curious about it. Just kind of the whole process, but it's non budgetary. You know, like when they get the medical call, how do they know if it's been in the whole, mm -hmm. who does he go through and how he gets dispatched? It's non budget. So, the dinner party will be interesting to even see what the categories are. For purpose. You know, for fire, it seems like it was a bit easier to divide the category for grease. Um, well, yeah, they have the category of assault or you know, break ins. And yeah. Like that. That's not I was actually more about the well, how much is fire and how much is is police, but yeah, what are the what's the total? Yeah, so it five, doesn't matter. Five thousand seven ninety three versus what yeah. the police it doesn't matter. Have. It's the police just, go on every fire call. In, in this town, the police go on every every uh, emergency call, a rescue call, or fire. So um, when when you see all three of them, that's because the call came in for advanced life services. When you only see two, it's probably the basic. Because I'm so. You, you always think about that, though. You see the whole entourage coming, but that's probably what. It is a, it's a system in place, depending on which area of town, okay? What goes to, like, up to Hyde versus what goes down in Stallington or in the center. And that, and the next thing is, sometimes it's a judgment call on the dispatch as to what type of emergency call is coming in. And if that's not, also, when the, when the uh, rescue gets there, they're all... EMTs, they're not paramedics. Um, although some are on the outside, they're paramedics, but not officially for the town. So they make the call for the dispatcher, send the backup. Thank you. It's a process. Michael? Your shorter, simple answer why we do not provide advanced life services? Um, <clears throat> actually, Chief Kelly did mention to say some towns do provide it. I guess the decision was made that you know just not something we want to invest in. Um, it, it's a it's a union situation. It's not that the town hasn't tried to have uh, their own, but it's it's a union thing that comes up during negotiations on the fire side, and they haven't been able to come to an agreement. Okay. So our our firefighters are all EMTs, but not paramedics. Right. They right. have to be paramedics, and we would yeah. have to negotiate that in their contract. Um, I know just, said so long. To add one more thought to this question about why all these vehicles go and so on and so forth. When I first got on the select board, I actually went and did a tour with each of the chiefs of, you know, sort of all their facilities and, and talked to them about what everybody does. And trust me, there are very good reasons why the vehicles that are 70%. And uh, it's important, it's necessary, it's public safety, it's being sure you can. Um, Deal with whatever situation you run into when you arrive, so on and so forth. So it may seem crazy to have three vehicles, but they're really necessary. Other questions? Sorry, Phil. <laughs> no more questions on the fire budget that you answered, John? Do you have more to? Um, Maybe I'll just point out I did send the email around this, this afternoon noting that we're going to, we're going to, uh, the, the total is going to be. $3,163 higher. That just relates to a stipend that was showing in the detail that didn't flow through to the front page uh, discussion where emails with uh, Alex earlier today. He said that it should have flowed up to the front page. So uh, I don't know if you saw my email already. Has any questions on that? But Alex did confirm the, the budget amount, which I sent around earlier today. And it will be out uh, when we're ready. It's a total of 3,163 higher. So what is your uh, motion for the fire budget? Uh, like the motion to approve uh, fire budget of eight, $8 million, 775,585. Second. What is that number again? Eight, eight, eight million, 775,585. We have a motion for eight seven seven five five eight five. That's been seconded. Seconded. <clears throat> Any other questions? All, right. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Unanimous. Thank you. 
Um, services. Okay, uh, page 130. Um, on the salary side, really nothing to talk about. Uh, the decreases are mostly because they have some new people, so less longevity. <laughs> Less salary, um, and then on the expenses side, there's there's no change. Uh, so, Telfer, to respond to your question, the question on fifty two eighteen, the training, uh, that's for their uh, required continuing education uh, for the temps in uh, fifty one oh two. That's for fill in inspectors during vacation and sick time. Uh, contract and services in 5382 uh, pays for data fees for the iPads uh, they use during inspections on any engineers that we, uh, may need to confirm or contest uh, certain job site conditions. And then the zoning, um, the zoning assistant. Uh, so uh, the zoning board, the zoning board of appeals um, also rolled up to Mike Chompa, the uh, Head of inspections. Um, the two positions are separate and distinct, and nothing moves between between the budgets. The, uh, the the zoning board of appeals principal clerk and type of position was changed to the zoning administrator, and then the uh, inspectional service administrative position. Um, uh, this is a direct quote: "Was oddly classified as zoning assistant." And that was changed to the office manager. Uh, the two separate things. Um, Dollars for the office manager, and that used to be uh, classified as own assistant, and they've got a classified now as an office manager. <laughs> and then the plan for filling the vacant record keep position, they're working to, to fill that as soon as they can. Um, some other notes, uh, he would like to uh, bump up the, you know, the part-time positions, the, um, the local building inspector, and then uh, the, uh, the, the record keeping position. Um, I asked about the new online perm permitting system. He was very enthusiastic. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, that it's worked great. Um, they are doing some tweaking, but, um, and for any of you that have been involved in IT project implementations, stuff that's a little unusual is that the complex stuff actually worked really well and they've had more trouble with the simple stuff. Um, it's usually not how it works, so he's actually pretty lucky. Um, he was down this weekend. Um, and then they, um, they have to get uh, IT to code some reports. I, I did ask if there was any kind of a uh, report generator uh, so they could write their own, not uh, have to depend on IT. And he said there, there was. So I think it's just them learning, learning the system. Um, so basically anybody um, can get an open gov account and um, access the system. Um, and I said that they're, they're pretty happy with it. Um, one of the interesting things is I, I mentioned a couple of years ago that a prior um, uh, uh, inspection services uh, department had made the interesting decision to um, do all their filing by year instead of address. <laughs> and I was like, well, how does that work? So my house goes back to 1929. So theoretically, if I wanted to pull every permit on my house, I'd have to go year by year. Um, so he said one of the things they're doing is they're they're shifting it to to buy to buy a yes. um, the permitting system is um, uh, obviously does um, allow for scanning of you know the, all the various associated plans and other documents. So they're building their um, digital uh, records um, which is really the direction they should go that kind of solves all their potential sorting problems. Um, then, um, 
He did provide the uh, permit revenue report. Uh, this all this also is on SharePoint, by the way. The, the building that the, the permit report. Uh, so for fiscal uh, twenty three actuals, the amount of revenue was uh, two million eight hundred twenty three thousand nine hundred twenty nine. For 24, they're estimating at 2,350,000. So um, going down some, but not through the floor. Um, and he said he is seeing the volume go down. Um, uh, definitely more renos than demos and new construction. Um, and then I guess new energy codes are, that went into effect um, in, in January 1st are uh, also slowing things down. So. Um, you know, all in all, the revenue picture is not bad considering interest rates and so on. Questions? Michael? Yeah, I ran a test with it that over the weekend. You know, one house, one year, how many permits, how many dollars per permit didn't work. We get an aggregate number for cost of all the permits per year. Didn't tell me anything about how it was broken down, which is kind of useless if you're trying to see. Are these permits, are the numbers stated on these permits connected to reality? I'll save it for next year. Hmm. <coughs> Don't tell me, I have no control of it. <laughs> I, I mean, getting into the whys and where, yeah, save that. Questions, any other questions? Right. Yeah, Michael, you want to go? So I move um, that we off the budget as printed at $539,121. So good. Motion, that's one question. Any other questions, comments? Alan Jones. Thank you for just remind everyone that the revenues are a lot more than the expense to the next one. Mm -hmm. If you remember a couple of years ago, we tried to get them to justify uh, adding a position, uh, including documenting that. And they wouldn't or couldn't do it. We were ready to support them adding a position because you're right, uh, revenue do exceed expenses. And not by small Charlie. You know, I, I'm, I'm not entirely positive about this, but I believe that there is. A uh, state law that says that towns can't charge more than their expense services or services more than the expense. Correct. So it's not uh, kosher to be making uh, two, you know two million dollars on five hundred thousand dollars. Oh, totally. I don't, <laughs> I don't think that covers this. Yeah, yeah that's a school different. along the Fed Lake. That's the city of Boston. Fines, I don't think it covers inspection costs. We're talking about the cost, you know, stated for for the work that that, that is multiplied to get to. It. Yeah, but but I guess what I'm saying is that I'm not sure the state law, which says that you can't charge more for a dog license than it takes you to provide the dog license, applies to no. building permits. Advice would be wrong. Hey, thank you. So, what happens to the 1.5 million dollars that they are bringing in? It's under local receipts. Uh, so it's not presented as an offset. No. Thank you. Any other questions? It's funny with a negative budget, we apply as an offset. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we have a motion. A seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you, Daryl and Jim. Other budgets. Health and human services. Take it away. Okay. So health and human services. Uh, gosh, page 138 in your paper book. Um, so there's several there's a truth and funny data. We're gonna go through one by one. I, I don't know if you want to go from separately, Chris, or you want to go from as one bunch? Um, Separately, probably. Yeah, let's do separately. Okay, so let's start with health and services. Um, Christine Bongerno got promoted this year to 
um, deputy um, manager for charge operations. of operations. And so we got big recess on the salaries in the health department because it was a cascading uh, move up with a subsequent reset on salaries. That's the 11% decrease in salary that you're seeing. It's just reduction in cost of longevity and so on and so forth. Um, not really clear from the information here, but that reset on the director's salary was about what well, was a lot. I want to say Christine was making closer to 150, maybe 154, and she looked at the 24 budget. So that's a big chunk of that reset. But there were a couple other salary lines that also reset it because of that. Um, so overtime longevity pretty much staying the same. Longevity obviously is down. Same reason, um, auto allowance is just for health inspectors moving around the town. Um, the expenses are all pretty flat. There was a question about what the contracted services are. Contracted services, just to remind everybody, is um, our contribution to the Somerville Homeless Coalition, which is an organization that we work with to get the homeless in Arlington's boundaries housed. And um, also that we contract out our um, sealer of weights and measures. So it's the combination of those two things that um, is covered by contracted services. Um, the road control is, you know, obviously they, the actuals for 2022, for 2023 are a little lower than that, but I do know that they are continually working on being more and more innovative about how we get rid of rats because there's rats all over. Um, you would think it would just be a restaurant uh, related thing, but it's not. And um, we do try to do things like, you know, use dry ice and so on and so forth that are not the poisons that are killing birds. Um, and I don't know, did we, we had a note on this, didn't we? More on drums? Yeah. Um, Somewhere in email, she talked a little bit about this. Um, they do feel like they have enough money to continue to work at it. Um, so we're not going to see an increase in that budget. Um, mosquito control is all about mosquito borne disease. This is all about keeping us all from dying of some horrible tropical disease. Uh, I think that's everything under Health and Human Services. Do folks have questions on this? Right back, did you want to answer? I just wanted to add, um, if you notice on the offsets, that the significant decrease in offsets is due to the ARPA money going away. Yeah. And so due to that decrease in ARPA money, we're also down one um, health, compliance. health compliance officer. Yes, yeah. so previously we had one additional position as a health compliance officer, which was ARPA funded. So when the ARPA went away, we lost the health compliance. Yeah, this is, this is the last year ARPA will appear in our budget supporting personnel. I think Jim said that at the meeting, but we also have confirmation from the department heads. Other questions? Alan Jones. You know, just comment on the rat control. They're, they're using something called spark boxes, which are electrocution boxes, which collect the rat bodies. And the beauty of that is it collects the data of how many rats are caught over a period of time. So they can actually use it to say, if they go to a restaurant and say, you have a rat problem, fix your dumpster. They put a box there and they can actually see if the population goes down to see if the problem is solved. So it's, it's, it's a really smart thing to do. It's a lot of it was Christian's initiative. Rats probably are great. I think rat boxes. I think. Or even connected rat boxes. <laughs> other you questions. Right. Really? So. Right. Any other questions? Or help in human services? Humphrey, I think I covered everything that was in this section. <laughs> Um, so I move approval of a taxation total for health and human services of seven hundred thirty-five thousand six hundred and sixty-six. Second. Sophie, did you have a question? No, I was just trying. Well, just a technical thing on that charts. Why wouldn't the fiscal year twenty twenty-four number for Bongiorno show the number we had in our budget books? I don't school? know why. Okay. Um, we think there's a bunch of little bobbles in okay. the book at the right. moment, and it should have shown last year's total. And there's some we're, we're noticing some of the 
dollar change or percent change in some of these budgets are not quite accurate. Right. And you emailed Alex about okay. it. I think we'll be getting an update that fixes all of that at some point. Um, right. But I didn't want to hold up the budget. Agreed. I'm just reason. curious. Um, I had to look at the 2024 budget to see what the real explanation for that salary reset was because it's like 11 percent drop in salary is a big thing. So, right. Um, other questions? All right, um, Penny. So, um, thank you. So, I have a question about opioid funding. Mm -hmm. Is that money coming in now that um, we have that prevention services manager? It's coming in, and it was allocated by town meeting last year, I believe. I don't know if it shows up in this budget because then it has to be accounted for separately. I don't know. Um, but we definitely have it and we are spending it. Thank you. Any other thoughts? All right. All in favor of 735-6 for Health and Human Services say aye. 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 Any opposed? Yes. Am I the only one that thinks it's funny that the name of the previous document of prevention services manager's last name is vodka? No. Yes. <laughs> it's more, very hard to have a morning meeting. Being less day than just the okay. Very hard to have a morning meeting with the director of health and human services to see that and not call her. <laughs> Anyways. He's moved up from old centers. Yes. <laughs> Any other budget? Um, I can go on and continue to do these. Go so ahead. veteran services. Um, the biggest job for Yeah, thank you. <laughs> oh, what would I do that? Um, so the biggest jump here is the salary of the um, the one before you, which is the director of veteran services. There is a changeover, and I believe that the previous. Uh, veteran services director had been working less than full time towards the end and hence the jump. It was also true that when we discussed this, um, and this happened in several conversations with these departments, I was getting tougher. And so to get someone with the requisite experience, they couldn't, they couldn't come up, they couldn't come in at a lower dollar than this. Um, and that is the biggest expense. The, um, the veterans aid and assistance expenses, we get a big chunk of that back from the state. Uh, so we budget for it, but then money comes into the general funds to cover most of it. Uh, I don't believe it's 100%, but it's like 85%. Questions? Any other questions? Sign. Your sign. Oh gosh, I don't remember. We asked this question last year. Did I think there there to add um, new veteran memorial information to the various monuments. Awesome. The note I have from last year says this expense goes towards the preservation and restoration of military markers and signs throughout town. Director recently restored the sign at the entrance of the old burial grounds and then all expense to the town. Oh, yes, yeah. thank you. All right, other questions? So, also to follow up, so that was the one for last year's budget. So, I'm assuming they, the new director hasn't told you which science is updating with the new 5000, but that would be a follow up question just so we can keep track of this. I do not know which science. Okay. And then, um, looking back at last year's, I, my understanding was the director of veteran services previously had been serving a long time and he wasn't a one. Point OFT. I think the reason that the budget was lower in 2024 was that in that year he only worked part time. Not that his total salary would have been lower if he worked full time. That was that was what came up in the conversation when we asked about what other jobs. The, was it budgeted at 1.0? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, that's the full amount that was budgeted. Yeah. I don't, I think. Might be thinking. So, one reason that 2023 is higher 
then the budget is because that was a buyout of the person's contract when they retired. Any actual any actual that explains why the actual job got out. So that right, so but the budget we're using for 2025 is still higher than what the previous guy was making, which is fine if that's what you need to hire. But I thought the previous one was long you know, huge longevity had been there a really long time. Yeah, when I, I don't know, okay, but when we asked about the difference between the 24 and the 25 budget, the response was, in part, that he was working, not over. Am I wrong? I think you're thinking of someone else. Yeah, someone, someone else. else. Someone else's okay, hours. so never right. mind. I'm lying yeah, that doesn't match. So we will go back and ask that question, but do you want to hold the budget for that? or No, I'm just something to... I don't know, just trying to understand yeah. where we had longevity. So presumably somebody who had been here for a while at such a lower pay yeah. compared to what somebody new came in at. Yeah. Alan? Which is our 75728 is lower than what the budget is. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe there was some, you know, uh, voluntary reduction in hours or something that, that baked back into the budget because the 24 budget isn't actual. It's a right. budgetary That's number. Which doesn't match ours. So, in fact, in the finance committee report will be zero in because it'll be 82, 3.1. Got it. Right. Last year. I don't know. It could be another one of those budget book bottles. I'll, I'll dig in. Oh, yeah. It's, it's definitely another one of the budget book bottles. We yeah, have to be yeah. consistent with that. John, um, what's the nature of the uh, 240,000 abated assistance? Um, it's assistance for veterans with. Things like finding housing, um, uh, helping cover housing costs, um, other services they may need um, to get settled back to the across the board. Rent. Across the board. Yeah. The, the way that I think of this budget is that Arlington has an employee whose job is to essentially function as a liaison between yeah. the residents of Arlington who are veterans sure. and the agencies which are meant to provide services for them. Yeah. Right. So if you're a veteran and you don't have your discharge papers and you don't know how to get them, you call this person yeah. and he helps put you in contact with it. So yeah. most of that money, you know, as Annie said earlier, will actually be reimbursed by From various the, veterans' yeah. agencies. Yeah. Right. So right. Arlington is effectively not paying for the actual services. We're paying for the person who helps facilitate people accessing the services they're entitled to as veterans. Got it. And and I, I think the director of veteran services is also doing some community liaison work, you know, when we get to Veterans Day and Memorial Day and they are having veterans come speak at the schools and or you know, parade celebrations, flags, all those things. Um, the director of veteran services make sure that happens. So um, yeah. I think it's one of the cooler things we do. Yeah, no, it sounds great. I I wonder, I mean, maybe if they broke it into two different line items, it seems like a, a large number would be like, you know, a little bit of everything, but. I mean, we can make not, a, not this year, but maybe. We can make a note on my list. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she says, looking at Tara, he's been typing away on my list. Yeah. Well, that reminds me of, we had the same question with legal, right? That everything was in this bucket. Mm -hmm. And I think it's the comptroller. Like something to go with Ida to, or who was it to go and we discuss breaking out? New charter accounts, mm -hmm. control, yeah. which is going into effect, but it's not in this budget. Other questions? Josh. Just to follow up on that. So the, the actuals for 22 and 23, much less than the budget amount, but are those reflective of the reimbursements or? Um, I believe they're reflective of what we spent, but that the reimbursements come into the general fund. I don't think we see them here. So, with, with not the same comments that we had about the selectmen's select board's budget, that, that, that money might be allocated to another person if we know that it's actually not going to get spent. I'm sorry, say, I'm not following. Well, you're, you're saying that, the, well, the actuals are, I don't know, almost 50%. Not 50%, forty percent less or whatever oh. than what the budget is. Yeah. So it's a significant cash that's kind of sitting there. Plus, you're saying you're getting reimbursed. 
So you're having even more money coming back to the general fund. I mean, it, but you re get reimbursed only if you provide this. If the reimbursement re doesn't come if the veteran is not receiving the budget you're receiving. Do you know what I mean? You get reimbursed So I think what you're asking for is a better accounting picture of exactly how that cash flows. So we should add that to the list. Yeah. Um, let me see what I can do for next year. So later this year. Well, I think to follow up, I think um, Josh's point is that consistently, it looks like we're constant, we're consistently budgeting 240,000. We're consistently yes. having lower actuals. So this would be one to drill down on and see. Yes. That's what I'm saying. Okay. We should go get the reports and see what's really going on. I mean, if you look at the whole budget, it's actually pretty pretty big percent of the whole budget. Okay. So, Rebecca, according to our discussion with them, they said that um, a minimum of seventy five percent of the expenses expended are reimbursed by the state under certain conditions. So, emergency housing, disaster support, etc., are reimbursed a hundred percent by the state. So, I think it depends exactly what the veteran needs, how much is reimbursed by the state, but it is a minimum of seventy five percent. Right, but that's not coming in. I don't think that's, I mean, that's not my question, right? That's, I mean, I'm not looking at the reimbursement, I'm looking at the budget versus the actual. Right. But going back in the 2020, the actual in 2020 was almost 240,000, we were 238 in 2020. Right, it has to do with there's there's a change in population over right. time. Okay. Right, depending on. And you don't so know, know what that population is. is and you don't know. Here to another okay. Charlie. Yeah, sure. Just to follow up on his comment. I think the, you know, we've been in war for 20 years, and at the height of the uh, Iraq war, you know, there was a lot more demand on veteran services than now. And the Veterans Department has to have that money or else they can't provide the services. We get it back from the state later, but they budget so that they have the funds to provide the services when they're needed. Great. The cash flow issues. Other questions? Is there a motion? So I move uh, a budget of 333,612 for veteran services. Second. Any other questions? All right, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous, thank you. <clears throat> Council on Aging. Okay. <clears throat> Salaries. There's a big bump in salary. Uh, there is um, one position in particular that took a big jump. This was a requested reclass and then a subsequent negotiation that resulted in a $13,000 increase in um, angles. Um, Salary about that, um, and that's probably the biggest um, effect on those salaries. Um, and I believe the rest of it is all uh, changes in steps and longevity. And then obviously everything else is pretty flat, and the uh, offsets are up a little bit. So what we have is a 7% increase in the total budget. Can I just add the offset comes there from the state executive office of elder affairs. That is intended to cover a couple of positions, basically. Um, geriatric nurse and one of the social workers, I believe, are covered by the state. Questions? Okay. Anyone have any questions? Alan Jones. Thank you. And I, I, I did actually get to this question in advance. Um, there was talk last year about eliminating the council on aging transportation enterprise fund and just moving <clears> that into the budget with uh, the, the revenues as an offset for the budget. Uh, was there any discussion of that? No. <laughs> 
there should be discussion. It's on the list that Tara and I are building. Okay, thank you. Um, so we will definitely have that conversation soon. All right. Any other questions? We have a motion in. Um, so I move that we uh, vote a total of $400,226. Dollars for the Council on Aging <clears throat> Taxation Total Budget. Second. Any other questions? All right, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, unanimous. Okay, diversity, equity, and inclusion. So the director moved from a grade nine to grade 11. That was part of the paying classification plan we moved last year. Uh, I believe that is most of the changing salary, but there is some uh, step increases for other folks. Um, biggest question you're gonna have about this is the ARPA money, when does the ARPA money go away? The ARPA money will support this position this year. And then there'll be a decision to make. Um, that's the community outreach person. That is the community outreach person. That's Marzilli. And the um, expense budget is flat. The thirty-six thousand dollars for consulting is going to be used. Uh, to support capacity building initiatives, trainings, and other forms of programming to implement the recommended outline, the recommendations outlined in the town's 2023 equity audit. Right now, the priority areas are language access, strengthening cultural responsiveness within the town government, and creating an equity dashboard to assess progress towards the established goals and objectives for the department. So that's what that part of money is being put on. Um, and let's see. Yeah, there's otherwise no change over in the department. No changes in position. I think I'm ready for questions. Questions, anyone has a question? Allison, which will outline you. Okay. Al, what's your, what's your question? Yes, hi, Annie. Um, I didn't quite hear you and I don't have the budget in front of me. I apologize for that, but um, the ARFA money is gone for next year. Are the positions eliminated? It will be gone the following year. It's currently in this budget, but it will disappear next year. In 26. Correct. FY26, it will be gone. The yeah, positions. I, it will be. It will be gone unless they find the money somewhere else. Okay. Thank you. Following up on that, if they don't find the money, do they have a plan? For now, the plan is they will be looking for other sources of funding. That was the most I could get. Yeah. Other questions? So, far. so um, on the consulting, and the equity dashboard mm -hmm. saying that's so they have to hire someone from outside to build that as opposed to I guess the director doing it. I'm just kind of curious what kind of consultants are yeah. hiring. I I no, I didn't ask them to give a breakdown because at this point in their budget cycle they wouldn't be able to tell you that it's this much for this and this much for that. They haven't got the budget and they haven't drafted it yet. Um, I would suspect that that dashboard is not the bulk of the money. But yeah, um, since I sort of do that for a living, I wouldn't be surprised if they're hiring somebody to build it. It may not be, it might be something in the capacity of the IT department, which depends on what data and what tools and how it's going to be pulled together. But they might be getting some help to design it, figure out what the metrics are, so on and so forth. Um, the, but when we talk about capacity building and training, and um, you know, implementing the recommendations in the plan, I suspect that's the bulk. You know, 
that brings me up. What, what do you mean by capacity building? So building staff capacity and you can use volunteer capacity to respond to the problems discovered by the equity audit. So working with the human rights commission, the rainbow commission, probably a lot of internal town employee work, so on and so forth. Uh, the issues that were raised by the so, so looking back historically the consulting there was talk about something consultants for power powerful pathways and it was for staff and residents are they still doing that those kinds of things or is this different now i believe powerful pathways was the chosen consultant in the first year okay and that was community discussions and training right but that's um, not what it is anymore no i think this is mostly internal at this point but I mean, I I don't have the equity audit in front of me, but I know there were very specific recommendations uh, for things to do. Al. Yes, hi, I, I'm not sure, I'm having difficulty hearing, uh, but the uh, front page of the Globe had an article today, the towns are not spending, and cities are not spending the money getting for drug addiction therapy. Uh, is What is Arlington's plan for spending its money and has it done so to date? I know we asked this question last year. I did not ask it this year and it doesn't appear in this budget. So I may have to go back and ask that question and come back to you. Yeah, because we are getting, I believe we're getting- We are money. getting it and we, we did appropriate it last year, the amount that we had. So we appropriated it to be spent, I believe, in the health department. So I don't remember exactly what for. I mean, it's very specific what it has to be spent on, Al. It can't just be spent on whatever we feel like spending it on. No, I understand. Uh, and I think we appropriated the money in the uh, in a Warren article, if I remember correctly. Yes. Okay. Well, I'm okay. checking on the okay. Warren again on Monday. So uh, I'll see, hopefully, that there's an yeah. article there. Great, yeah. thank you. Other questions? All right, we have a motion, Anna. Right. We have a motion. Um, so I move uh, $201,188 dollars for the um, diversity, equity, and inclusion taxation total. All right, second. Okay. Any other questions? All right, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed. All right, so raise your hand for, for approving. One, your hand up. One, two, three. 13, four. Opposed? One. Abstentions. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Enterprise funds. Arlington Youth Consultation Center. What was it, Ken? Enterprise fund. Oh, well, they're how? 13 to 1. What? 13 1, right? Yes. 13 1 0. Yeah. This is page 174. Um, so starting with the salaries, you will see that there's a fairly substantial um, increase in the in wages sphere. I believe this is the addition of um, some additional um, staff positions just the hourly psychiatrist, or was it something else? Um, but mostly to meet demand. Uh, remember, most of the income coming into AYCC comes in through um, insurance um, uh, billings, and um, there are currently 425 young people in the families being served, and there's 200 on the waiting list. So they want to add some capacity in order to meet that demand. Um, the trend is up a little bit. 
Um, pretty much everything else is uh, steady state except for administrative fees. The administrative fees cover the cost of electronic health records, billing systems, Zoom Health, HIPAA compliant, Google applications, DocuSign fees, and uh, Lexicute interpreter and translation services. So it's all software infrastructure basically to be able to run the department. Um, and also to be able to do telehealth uh, in particular. Uh, so that's a nice big increase in expenses and salaries. Um, I just make a note. Okay. If you're looking at the bottom right of page 174, where it should say the dollar change and the percent change, as we had the problem last week, the dollar change and the percent change, those are just old numbers that are unrelated to this budget. So you should look directly at the 2024 budget and the 2025 budget and just in your head, look at what the difference is, right? Ignore what it claims the percent changes. That is not, it does not reflect the actual yeah. budget. It's not necessarily accurate. Okay. And so the revenue, um, so there are, uh, there's CDBG funding, there's some intergovernment, intergovernmental revenue, which I believe is school department using the AYC uh, services, state revenue, um, client fees and insurance reimbursement. Um, they do have a gifts and donations account with the town and you can make a donation to AYCC and that then is used in this gifts and donations line. The $120,000 transfer from other funds is the town's contribution to supporting AYCC. That's money that comes out of the general fund. And then there is some uh, ARPA funding. And I don't think that use of retained earnings is at all relevant. That I think also has inaccurate in the last two columns. Um, yeah, and then again, you will see the ARPA offset which I believe is going away uh, at the end of this year. So I think I'm ready for questions. So, so is there a retained earnings account? The I, I'm not sure there is a retained earnings account. There is $122,846. Okay. Um, so yeah, I guess there's a retained earnings account. There was some confusion about the difference between that and the gifts and donations account, but there has to be a specific account used to hold the funds if you contribute to a town department, and that's what that gifts and donations line is. That's where it's coming out of, basically, to be spent. Um, it's just a unnecessary state law mandated method of accounting right. for donations made from the outside. When people write the checks to AYCC. Or yes. funding, and they do. Yeah. Um, Last year we talked about that was coming out though, that whole line was being deleted is what we said last year, but that's not. Yeah. Oh, I, there was, you know, there's a new director because Christy looked up, okay, yeah. and she wasn't sure what the actual budgeting and accounting requirement was. So that's another thing that's going to go on our list to get the controller straightened out for me. Um, I'll see if I can get that information for everybody before the end of the budget cycle. But regardless, it's their money and they have a right to use it. So I think we can just assume it's in the budget. Um, and as you can see, the budget basically balances. Charlie, you had a hand up. Thank you. So, um, the uh, Gibson donation account isn't shown as a differential in the uh, dollar change column, right? Correct. That, that, whole, column, that whole column is a mess. The whole column is a mess. Yeah. So then, um, if I if I look at the twenty three actual twenty four budget and twenty five budgets. Um, is, it looks like the expenses are increasing two hundred thousand a year. Am I? That wouldn't <coughs> surprise me at all. The demand for the services is increasing rapidly. 
I mean, youth mental health is, youth having mental health issues is on the rise, particularly since COVID. And we're uh, not. But in the past, uh, mm -hmm. where, where I was headed with this question is in the past, Christine Mangiano would have, she used to increase the revenues throughout this almost, yeah, the revenues almost to a, uh, a break even point. And, and um, we, we're still putting in $120,000 from the town. Mm -hmm. And if the ARBA money goes away, that's another $1,000. i am yes. just wondering if you discuss whether or not they see this improving or not improving, or what's the plan? Well, I didn't discuss that with Colleen. I could go back and discuss it with her. I think the same rule applies that when the ARPA money goes away, whatever it's funding goes away. And um, yeah, I, they didn't specifically specify a position that that money is supporting. Um, they do have the option to raise more money, but the town has always made a contribution to AYCC in something close to that amount. In fact, when I was on the select board, we cut our contribution to AYCC and helped them move to an enterprise fund model where they were making money. They were not being very good about billing insurance and so on and so forth. So we kind of changed the culture of the organization so that they would raise more of their money. Well, that was, that was Christine Bongiorno. And I, I, I don't do well, I'm just trying to understand if there's a trend that I mean, if the gifts and donations may not show up next year. And if the, if the, uh, May I add one thing on gifts and donations? Yeah. John, so $50,000 of that $100,000 is uh, coming from the Cummings Foundation. Um, apparently it was included previously. It was listed in an offset in the previous budget for into our mm -hmm. meeting. They do also have a charitable corporation that has $700,000 as a balance. And then they also do run their annual appeal. Who has the 700000 the AYCC has a charitable corporation. Oh, and that, that, that shows up in that line as well? Uh, if they withdraw from there, it, yeah. it would appear in that line, correct. The and balance in that is 700000 So the real, the real risk here is ARPA. Yes, the real risk here is ARPA. Okay. But I do believe the town is going to continue to contribute that $120,000 because it offsets costs for people who either don't have insurance or can't afford the co-pays for their insurance. So it's providing services. Yeah, I, I, I understand that. I agree. I'm just trying to, I was just looking mm -hmm. at the expense line mm -hmm. over the two years jumping by a substantial amount. Yeah, but you, you'll notice that the insurance reimbursement and client fees also jump by a substantial amount in that same period of time, Charlie. Correct. Right. So and is that realistic? It is very realistic for this to continue an upward trend of insurance reimbursement as they expand services. I think it's also realistic to assume that the town will also always be making a contribution and they'll always be seeking other funding because they need to support clients who can't otherwise afford the services. And these are critical services for a lot of those patients. Other questions? Gosh. In terms of the backlog, are they thinking of expanding further or? Well, that's what the additional positions in this budget and the jump in salaries is. So they're expanding by the capacity by a couple of people. And so I think they want to continue to expand to meet the demand as long as they believe that the reimbursements will keep up with that expansion. But aren't they servicing, you said, about 400 families or something? 425. And then back like 200? Yep. I had about, I don't know, 15 people, and then and two people are going to add 50% more capacity. I don't think they're going to add 50% yeah. more capacity. They're going to add some more capacity. I mean, there's also an in and an out, mm -hmm. right? So if you expanded capacity to be able to handle those 200 people right now, you'd be over capacity at some point as clients begin to roll off. Mm -hmm. So so there's a, I, I, I trust the director to know how to manage her pipeline. Mm -hmm. Sophie, um, looking at this uh, personnel, there's an hourly psychiatrist um, that's been vacant, 0.09. It's small, but 
almost 30,000 was vacant in last year's budget as well. Is should that be? Is I that I don't know. I mean, point oh nine is so little. I, I mean, is it better spent? I don't know. It, is it ever going to get? I mean, it seems my, hard to fill a point oh nine. My suspicion is that they're not actually filling that point oh nine. That what happens is that patients come in for therapy. And it's determined that they need psychiatric services, particularly that they need someone to monitor prescriptions, because most of the therapists at the MSC will not be people who can write prescriptions. And so they need someone available to send a patient to for that evaluation prescription and then to see that person every three to six months to be evaluated again. So, okay. You don't want to ask me why I know that. <laughs> Because I was just thinking, I, going back, it was a new position in last year's budget because it wasn't in yeah. the previous year. So it was brand new, it was vacant, and it's still vacant. So it looks like it's never been filled. Yeah, I mean, they may be struggling to find someone who has capacity, right? It's okay. Okay. Finding, finding mental health services, regardless of ability you pay, is just really tough right now. Other questions? You have a motion. Yes, so I move that we approve the Arlington Youth Counseling Center budget um, of $1,519,155,000 in expenses and $1,573,270 in revenue. Did you say one? Uh, one five one nine or one three one nine. One five one nine. It's one three one nine. It's one five one nine. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm looking down spot. It does So um, there's a motion. Second. Second. All right. Any questions? All right. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Unanimous. Thank you. Next. Aging transportation. Okay, there were um, ah, so we can see colors for the Murphy. Okay, all right, so Rebecca's reminding you that this is a place where the there was an increase in hours for the um, the information referral specialist, uh, and that explains the salary jump. The longevity, everything else is pretty flat. Um, you will notice on the income side that the dark fees are a little bit low. Dark is the oh god, I never remember what this stands for. Uh, dial a ride taxi. So, dial a ride taxi is one means of transportation for seniors. Um, it's apparently become relatively unreliable, and so the uh, dispatcher here on transportation has mostly been using volunteers at Uber. Um, and then the so there's there's uh, reimbursements. Um, for various things that come into the system. There's some CDBG funds. And then there's a transfer from the general fund and the use of retainer. Mm -hmm. Some of that. Did we ask about retainer yesterday? Yes. $44,842. Okay. So $44,842, which means we're going to use most of retainer earnings this year to support this project. Um, so, uh, this is mostly, and this is the reason to consider moving it back into the budget. This is mostly not self supporting. Uh, so, uh, questions? Sophie. Well, just to follow up on that. So, last year's note where the town meeting could terminate it, does that mean we should have done a warrant for this year? Or should we do it for next year? Probably. Because otherwise, we're going to be saying this every year. We don't actually. Yeah. No, I mean, I could talk to 
Oh, I could talk to the town manager and see whether we could squeeze it in. He's allowed to continue to add, but they will be, you know, in the shoot now. Um, right. And you're right. I just but we talked about it last year, so I'm just curious. I mean, I'd forgotten about it too, but yeah, I miss all those deadlines. No. But we have a list now. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, you've been adding to the list. Sorry, what was the last thing that you just, you all were just talking about? Oh, the thing that's at the top. Should we move CLA? Oh, okay. Charlie. Uh, just a suggestion. I think trying to shoehorn the cancellation of this department in at this late date is probably a burden on the <coughs> budgeting department. Right. It wouldn't be for this year. Yeah. But but I think opening the so we don't forget it might be a good idea. Any other questions? You have a motion. Um, so I moved to approve um, the company and transportation enterprise fund budget for $129,199 with revenue of $129,199. Second. Any other questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Yes. Are you done? Any of you have? I believe that is all of our budgets. All right. Thank you very much. Does anyone have any other budgets for tonight? All right. Who will have budgets for Monday? Uh, uh, Wednesday. Wednesday. Charlie, you have control and probably retirement. Does anyone else have any other budget that can be done? Oh, that's good. No one? I'll withdraw those budgets. You don't get to withdraw those budgets because I can't be here on the 14th. Yeah. We have a, we got, well, think, where are we with the um, treasurer postage? Does anyone know how about IT? I have, not Wednesday, but probably Monday. Who else will be ready on Monday? No one? All right. Well, let's see where we get on Wednesday. And uh, we'll have a slow time. Um, we've done a huge chunk of the budget in the last three months. So, so I think we're, 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 we're doing good. And I know that we have some budgets that can't be done and practically won't be done until the end of, November, uh, end of February and so on. So, uh, well, let's see if we can get some of these other budgets done between now and then. So we can just concentrate on big ones. All right. Uh, is there a motion to adjourn? So, so we have a meeting on, on Wednesday? We're having a meeting on Wednesday and we're having a meeting on Monday unless we decide else on Wednesday, but that's it. I know that some people have have plans for next Wednesday. So if we were not to meet, I'd rather not meet next Wednesday um, and do what we can do this Wednesday and Monday. Um, but there are no promises. Uh, we'll see what we can do um, with what we have. Alan. Was that Mention one sort of announcement for anyone who's interested in the future of Arlington's historical buildings. The town manager on 14th, Valentine's Day, at one o'clock in the afternoon, is giving a talk at the Historic Society about uh, Arlington's historical municipal <coughs> edifices, what's being planned to preserve them. So if you happen to be available that afternoon, this should be really interesting. And at five o'clock? One o'clock at the Historical Society. Good. Anything else? Uh, motion to adjourn. 
All in favor, say aye. 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 aye.